Hi everybody! I'm about to get started on a 60 minute soul journey session. So I'm going to be sharing energy work and wisdom with the client. I'm going to go ahead and read some of these goals here and then I'm going to be getting started. I will say the goals for this session are super beautiful and there's there's a lot to be said so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this in the description so you can all enjoy reading it. And I'm going to read some of these goals here and then I'm going to be getting connected. Okay. All right, so goals are, I love my dearest friend. I always have since I first saw her eyes decades ago. I feel like Thomas the Tank whenever I think of her, like there's actually a chance I could win her heart and protect her and be a partner with her. Is there a real chance? The timing seems to never be right, but through my experience communicating with spirit, I keep seeing affirmations that I should be a successful partner and father with her. I would love to continue communicating with her in a way she's comfortable with and ready for so I can help her. She understands but decided it's not in her best interest at this time. Others have said we could actually be twin flames. Is this true? She's even said we are the same. I think it's possible with all the intuitive magic and synchronicity that occurs whenever we communicate it or when I think of her. My fear is of breaking any woman's heart. How do I go about finding and dating other people when all I think about is being close to another person I love? Hmm. And this last part is, uh, to me, she's awakened a sleeping dragon. She's taught me how to help and how to love. It's so beautiful. All right, so what is your connection with her? Are you twin flames? How do you go about dating? Is it possible that you could be together? This is going to be a really beautiful session. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started now. So I see what is a, a piece of wood and it's, it's cut, so you have like a, you can actually see through it. Um, it almost looks like a, a piece of, I've seen cr a crystal, like where they kind of do a slice of it, and you could kind of look through it, it looks really pretty. But this is a piece of wood, and you can see through it. It's like a crystal that is also a piece of wood. But it's pure rainbow color. So when I see the wood and I look through it, I see a tunnel of rainbow energy and there's a starlight on the inside as well. So it's quite beautiful. This is more beautiful than a kaleidoscope. <laughs> it's a real physical object that I'm looking at holding and then looking through it like into a kaleidoscope of magical colors. It's beautiful. It's radiant. But the problem is we still just have this physical object. And the physical object isn't bringing the, the beauty of what is beyond this physical object into the experience. Because for you, it's not about the physical object. It's about what happens through this experience, which you're seeing this radiating rainbow energy and starlight. It's absolutely breathtaking. Um, so there's kind of a, a clash here between what is the beauty beyond all of this and then what is it that I'm holding on to because this wood is starting to get less and less meaningful it's just I just don't want to I don't want to hold on to this anymore and um, what's beyond it is is what I want to experience but I'm not able to experience it therefore all I'm holding on to is just this object it would appear as though you're still holding on to the dream though too. So by holding on to the object, you're also holding on to the dream. But the dream is changing because the way this feels is changing. I will say it's feeling more difficult and a bit heartbreaking. And I don't want to hold on to this piece of wood anymore. It was wonderful. It was magical. It was amazing. Everything about it is phenomenal except time. Time changes the way things feel. And now it is time to really look at this one. And is it worth holding on to this? If this is all we can hold on to, is it worth holding on to this? <sighs> okay, this is going to get difficult because it, it, I feel uh, 
feel I feel that in the heart. I feel pressure, and the pressure in the heart feels um, it's not necessarily sad. It's not necessarily. Um, it's kind of a difficult acceptance. Hmm. I see that you take this piece of wood, which is magical, which is like a, a special rock or a special, uh, a special item that brings good luck even. And I see it gets small and you put it in your pocket and you take it with you everywhere. And it heals you. It heals you. And you aren't holding onto it, looking at it um, day in and day out. You just carry it with you in your pocket and you allow it to heal you. And the rainbow energy does. But now, with it in your pocket, so you're not holding it, looking at it. Now you put it in your pocket, it feels good in your pocket. Now it's starting to not feel good in your pocket anymore either. So holding it in the hand is starting to feel different. Well, put it in my pocket and carry it with me that way. And that was great, but now that's starting to feel different too. And I say, let's just let this go. Let's just let it go. And the thought of letting it go kind of is burning of your hands. It hurts your hand to just let this thing go. And it, I'm going to, I'm, we are going to accomplish this just to see what is on the other side of letting this go. Okay. Nobody ever, you never truly let anything go because we're a part of literally everything. But the way that we are attached to emotionally and mentally and in, in our soul to certain experiences, um, when we find the strength to set that experience aside on the level that we are sharing energy with it, when we find a way to set it aside, we're, you'll always be connected with her, always. When you set it on the side, you get a new perspective. You gain a new viewpoint. You gain new learning, new discoveries about life, about yourself, about your soul, about everything. And so this is speaking to you. It's no wonder you're reaching out for a session because it's speaking to you so loudly, you're kind of wondering if it is time to set this aside. You're never, you're never setting this aside, letting her go, so to speak, is never necessarily like you have lost something or you have to bury it because it has died, something of this nature. That isn't what is happening here. You're just saying, okay, I want to see what is on the other side. I have been sharing so much love and patience and I feel confident that this is the relationship I'm looking for, but it is not being reciprocated at this time. So why don't I honor that? and find find a new pathway. Let us see what is beyond this. So you're sensing that, but you're also seeing the beautiful rainbow of the connection. And you're wanting to be patient enough for that rainbow experience to take place. So you're at a crossroads. And I will say on the energy side of things, it's going to be a healthy choice to set this aside. Let's just see if you can do it. I mean, this is actually burning your hand and, and it's just saying, hello, I need you to notice me. I need you to notice that we have to think differently. We have to, um, we have to make a change. And it's not trying to hurt you or anything. It's just trying to get your attention. And it isn't easy for you to set this down. <laughs> And in a way, you would rather feel the discomfort of it in your pocket or the discomfort of it in your hand or even on your palm of your hand. You'd rather feel the discomfort than to set it down. Because patience may prove um, an, alternate, um, an alternate view, an alternate um, pathway. So you could be patient through the sensation and then you can overcome the sensation by change. Life changes. So you will always hold on to this and it will come back to you as the most beautiful thing that it always ever has been. And it will feel that way. But it's getting more um, dried up. It's getting more... Um, the life force energy is uh, is not as as powerful as it, as it had been. 
And so I'm showing this part of you what I'm seeing and feeling from this. Right now, we are merely um, analyzing the energy, the, the connection, where your soul's at on your own pathway, all this stuff. So we're going to learn a lot on this journey. Um, on this soul journey session, we're going to learn a lot and see a lot. And what I'm running into right now is let's set this aside and let's see what is beyond this. So we, we have to do this. <laughs> we have to do this right now on the journey so we can see what is on the other side of it. You, uh, you're a really beautiful, strong soul because this is a hard, ridiculously hard thing to do and it feels very, very hard to do it and you're acknowledging that there is something that feels drier, more dried up about it and you close your eyes and you take a deep breath and you say, okay, and you literally are like, just like your, your eyes are closed and you're like trying really hard here to just, okay, <laughs> set it over there. It looks like a lucky penny. It looks like a, um, it's, it's an adorable little, little like special rock is kind of what it's like. You just set it down on the earth, on the earth. <sighs> There's special meaning to that because mother earth is energy is also here with you and in this choice and mother earth feels the preciousness of this stone or this meaning of this energy that you have just placed aside upon mother earth and now she is analyzing that energy herself you also are a sacred stone you know so mother earth analyzes your energy as well as her energy as well as my energy so we're all crystal energies walking around we're all trees with legs we're all you know part of organic material and pure energy and so she's analyzing this special stone it's like piece of wood that creates the rainbow she's analyzing it as she's also analyzing you as she's also analyzing um, your dream and her energy and everything and it seems like she has this has something in mind here Mother Earth is far more, um, she's clever and she's removing the crystal energies around her body um, in very healthy and dynamic ways that are going to help her too, as well as help you. So she, she too is a part of the direction of the human energies and where we feel guided to go is also connected to the planet, is also connected to the stars, but it's about Mother Earth right now. And we're seeing you as a crystal energy, as well as your dream is a crystal energy. And this is right now about you and your dream. She dissolves the dream and absorbs it into herself. And she smiles at you. And she becomes a pond that is right at your feet and her reflection gazes up at you and she smiles. And you don't notice Mother Earth smiling at you, but in this scene, you're thirsty. So you cup your hands and you drink out of this pond. It's really beautiful, pristine, clean water. <laughs> I mean, it's a magical pond. So you are, you're drinking out of this special magical water and she's watching you and smiling at you in the reflection of the water. And I see you taking a long time to actually find yourself. And I don't know on the scale of time, they're showing me, you, they show me you in nature meditating with this water, meditating with water, meditating with Mother Earth, and finding yourself. And you're finding yourself more than at the conscious level. You are integrating lots of energies. Um, processing lots of energies, energy downloads, energy activations, and it may not even be consciously that you are consciously aware of it. But I think that you are sensitive enough to say, yeah, I'm sensing some things are happening here, but may not be able to, to fully translate the meaning of it all. But I see you doing this. And I see you doing this for one day, but I see one day being lots and lots and lots of time. Um, so I don't know if it's just one powerful meditative experience or if you actually take time to really go on a journey for yourself. 
Go on your own personal soul journey for yourself. I see, I see more and more time passing where you're always, you all, she always has special meaning to you. This um, person will always have special meaning to you. I see this, but I see that there is something very va valuable and precious about you allowing Mother Earth to guide your crystal energy. That's, that's how they are showing it to me. That's how they're speaking it through me and wanting you to see it in this way. Okay. Spirit realm, Mother Earth, all the energies are wanting you to see it in this way. And Mother Earth has a surprise for you, a special gift for you. And it feels like a real tangible thing, not just uh, an energy download or activation, um, an invisible energy gift. <laughs> it feels like a real tangible thing. But you'll only be able to find it when you choose to find yourself and you choose to go on a journey. Because she shows me that your crystal energy is wanting to intertwine with her crystal energy. But it doesn't feel like it is the right time for that. I, I think she's also sensing it within herself that it isn't the right time. And that means that it isn't the right time. <laughs> and so now your crystal energy must find what it is your time is for right now. So you, you allow Mother Earth to guide you. You must be like ridiculously connected <laughs> for me to be sharing a message like this in this way. That says a lot about you. <laughs> okay. You need to trust that her soul is wise and that when her soul says it is not time, therefore it is not time. So allow your connection with Mother Earth to develop and allow yourself to be guided to what it is that you are to be guided to. <sighs> okay. I... I see you are into this, you are saying okay to this, you are allowing, but I also see lots of strings of energy that continue to connect to um, her energy. This, uh, this girl that you are really, that you, this friend that you really love. Okay, this, so we're gonna vent some, um, there's this, some energies of hurt, okay? So we're just going to vent those out, but it feels like anger. But we're just going to vent it out, and it's very stressful around the neck and a very stressful around the third eye and the mind. It's on the, the lighter level, but it is a, a energy that is um, reminds me of anger more than anything. It's very tight around the neck. Okay, let me watch here. This is being vented out and you're starting to get a cloudy mind and you're wondering what the connection is with this friend of yours because it's creating a wavelength that is altering these strings that are attached. It's altering those strings. And when those strings of attachment alter, it alters your thought processes about who you are and your life and it, it starts getting confusing and frustrating. So perhaps this anger is more about frustration than anything. Okay, we're going to have to linger in this because it just it just is. I just see you um, and time passing and I see these strings that are yellow. There's like four or five strings that connect you to her. And I just see them instead of being taut and like tight and straight, um, they become wavy and more like energy instead of a physical string. So um, I see that becoming energy and you're sitting in kind of um, what looks like a bead of water and it's getting kind of grayer on the bottom side and you're just venting out um who the this uh you know what what is my identity what is uh, and it feels confusing it feels a bit confusing because so much of your energy is already developing the dreams of what you see as your future um with it with this companion right and so when you're trying to explore your future beyond this it gets really foggy and fuzzy and confusing so and it does feel frustrating. And that's what I'm being shown. So your time is passing, nothing is changing. You're still in this state of confusion and you're processing it and it feels frustrating. 
and the wavy lines are still there so they aren't you're not letting go of them you're still allowing them to exist so when you fully let go of them and bring that energy back into yourself it will alleviate the confusion because you can make a choice and see what is on the other side of that choice you can say i'm going to see what my life would be like um, if i let go of this dream and you just choose to see what your life is like without being connected to that dream anymore. And you just follow along and see what happens. And now you are letting go of even the remnants of a potential connection. You're just letting it go and you're really focusing on you. When you do that, it, it, it alleviates the fogginess because you're making a choice to just focus on you now. And we're moving deeper and deeper into a layer of, uh, of exploration of you focusing on you without any, uh, without any distracting dreams. This is hard. This is getting harder because you feel colder without the connection. You feel colder. You feel cold. Like the connection was warm and it was creating warmth for you. And without the connection, it feels cold. And I say, wow, so you're finally getting to know who you are without the connection because you're quite warm. So why do you need this connection to be warm enough? Because you're quite warm already. So you've got to start working with your own um, energies, your own inner light. That's what's beyond this is you discovering yourself and what your own inner light is capable of. You should not feel cold on the other side of this. It's just learning learning how to adapt with life that is not based on a dream that you've had developing for a long time. Okay, spirit guides are coming down here at this point. I actually see beings. <laughs> they look like a couple old men. Um, I mean... <laughs> They're different, but they all look old. And there's three particular ones, but they almost look like one that has duplicating um, reflective parts of himself. And he's got kind of like a halo on, but it's not particularly like a round halo. It's almost like a crown of light and it comes forward, but it levitates above his head slightly. But it's a crown of light and it kind of attaches to the back of him and he's wearing a white robe and he's he's balding and uh, he has a um a beard that comes down and it's white and he's got white hair but he shows me parts of himself are in the shadow and blacked out and parts of himself are visible in the light so some of himself is in the shadow some is in the light and the versions in the light seem to be slightly different variations of the same face of the same guy but one of them's wearing like some purple, a little bit of purple in the white robe. Uh, you know, another one has more gray in his beard than white. Um, so there's just little nuances of variations that create um, what looks slightly different from this main one. But they all are basically the same guy. <laughs> and he's coming forward and he's sort of the leader of many versions of himself. And it creates a triangle so he's at the the peak of the triangle so and then there's like a row of two and then a row of three and then a row of four and it just goes on and on behind him and he's walking towards you this is interesting when he walks towards you um he shows me time and distance um <laughs> It's hard to even know how to describe this, but he's walked through you while simultaneously hasn't even reached you yet. While simultaneously, it, I mean, it's like I'm seeing different versions of the same scene. It's like variations of his own appearance. I see variations of what um, movement and distance and time look like. Variations, slight differences in what we perceive as time. So his placement in front of you, within you, behind you, over here, over there, above, below, like he's just like, he's showing me variations and then he shows me none of this has actually happened. In fact, he's not even anywhere to be seen. I don't even know that he exists. Like he shows me um, variations of time and all are happening at the same time. All versions are happening at the same time. And all versions of himself are happening at the same time. There's, there's a reason why he shows me um, himself in the shadow 
Like, I couldn't possibly see what those versions of himself look like. And they need to be in the shadow for some reason. When he speaks, all of them speak at the exact same time. So there's quite a volume of sound. And he speaks before you. And you're kind of um, half in the shadow, half not. And when he speaks to you, it's loud and clear. But yet it gets muffled out as though he has said nothing at all. And is it you that is muffling his voice? Is it time? Is it distance? Space? You know, what is muffling his voice? Because I can hear him loud and clear, but I simultaneously hear when his voice reaches you. It, it dr drones out. It, um, it becomes uh, dampened. The volume is distorted. And what he says is unclear. But yet it should be loud and clear. What he is saying to you is should be loud and clear. So maybe it's not what you want to hear. This guide of yours is like your best friend. Like your ultimate best friend. Um, he is a guide of yours. And I can feel your friendship is ridiculously timeless. Like it goes on and on and on and on and on. Like the waves of the ocean. Um, that's your connection with this guide. This is how he chooses to present himself to you. And he needs you to actually stop and make a commitment to hearing what his messages are actually saying without distorting them. And you can hear him loud and clear. And he wants you to develop that connection with him. So an idea my, my spirit guides higher self that just like plops into my brain is... So you have this beautiful, phenomenal, absolutely every woman in the whole world needs to hear <laughs> the kind things that you wrote um, because the female, um, the divine feminine of the human race and desperately needs to see the kindness of the divine masculine that exists, the, the genuine love, the tenderness, the caring, the concern the protectiveness, the father that is purely loving. Like the divine feminine of the human race needs to see more reflections of you, okay? Um, now you have this dream, okay? And this dream, which is so absolutely beautiful, um, now becomes your purpose in life. This dream does. But this dream is shielding you from hearing an alternate purpose. And you'll never know what that is um, because the dream is louder and it is um, it is more in your perception and you are holding on to it more than what is you're also, um, you have another purpose, okay? So it's time to let this one go for, they aren't saying yes or no, that this will work out or this won't. They are just simply saying you need to step away from it. And you need to connect with your guides and you need to allow their messages to come through without this dream getting in the way or distorting their messages or guidance for you. Because sometimes we just want things to be this way and we will do whatever it takes to see that all the way through, even choose patience um, and everything. Even sh give up our entire life um, for patience to see this one through. But he's saying he needs you to start listening to him. So again, we're going to let the dream go. That is coming up once again to let the dream go. They aren't saying this will or will not work. They're just saying you need to let this go for a while. You need to find yourself. Okay. You're awesome. You actually have the power within you to be an awesome listener and to have the strength to say, okay, again, I will continue to go through the layers of letting go of this dream. And I will choose to listen to my spirit guide. You are actually doing this. <laughs> I'm so ridiculously proud of you. It's hard. Like I don't always see souls that are so such good listeners in the journey state and just say, okay, I will do that. <laughs> Usually it's like a lot of talking and convincing for them to see um, even a, okay, well, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> you are actually saying, okay, I will do that. 
It's really good. It's really impressive. You um, are again, again, are, it's what is like in a, a droplet of water and I see the yellow wavy lines here and you are working on letting them go and it's not easy, it's hard. And what could have been four or five is now dwindled down to three. So you are making progress here. Your guide is watching over you the entire time. He's starting to look like um, King Triton. Um, he looks like he, he has a mighty white beard and he's very strong and muscular looking now. And he holds a, like a golden trident. Um, so he's uh, kind of a reflection of water um, and then mightiness. Um, th there's a lot of beautiful vibes that are coming from your spirit guide. He's shifting his identity now. And he's watching over you while you are in this droplet of water. And you are working on letting go of the dream. And my spirit guides say that you letting go of the dream is also like you letting go of a part of yourself. That's how hard it is for you to let go of this. Is like you letting go of a part of yourself. That's where the whole twin flame idea comes from. Because if you are twins, then you, she is also a part of yourself on a very reflective level. Okay. They aren't saying yes or no to that. They're just saying that working on letting go of the dream is like you letting go of a part of yourself. But that's a misconception. I'm going to work with you on this one here in just a moment. I'm touching you on your shoulder. You're sitting in this water droplet. I touch you on your shoulder. And I say you are not losing yourself. You are gaining yourself. That is the misconception. When you are letting go of this companionship, you are not losing yourself. You are actually gaining yourself because right now we're finding out who you are. So we're not finding out who you are by losing who you are. We're finding out who you are by gaining who you are. <laughs> so you're gaining so much from this choice. So I'm, I'm putting my hand here and I am sharing that message with you. But you say, but what if who I am is um, who she is? What if who I am is who she is? And what if who she is is who I am? And if who she is, I'm thinking here, I say, if who she is is who you are, and who you are as her stated, it is not the right time, then you are telling yourself it is not the right time. So her reflection of you is saying it is not the right time. Gosh, this is ridiculous. This is so hard. Your, your soul is really... This is a really hard learning because you're just so loving and you're so beautiful. And to hear that is kind of hard. It's hard. You're really strong though too. Because as I feel the sort of like the hard, the hard process of it, I feel you gain strength very quickly and are in acceptance. You find acceptance quickly, way quicker than the average Joe, that's for sure. So another outstanding, I mean, you are an outstanding person. Like this is just yet another outstanding reflection of you, okay? You are able to come to a state of acceptance way faster than most people. And I'm talking about a lot of people. All right, again, um, the wavy yellow lines are dwindling from three down to two. And uh, it's relaxing your neck a lot, almost to the point where like my head is like gonna plop. <laughs> like, wow, it's like I have no more stiff neck. Uh, whoa, I don't have any neck to hold my head up now. <laughs> I mean, that's how like freeing of your neck energy, it just, it just feels very relaxed. So that's, that's good. Sending the energy back. And the next idea comes from your guide. 
because we're exploring the idea of if what you are is who she is, if what she is is who you are, um, there's another idea here that if it is for you to find yourself, then it is for her to find herself. Um, so as a mirror, um, you both will be doing this um, self-discovery journey. I mean, it's what is on the right side is also on the left side. It's like um, this is what that we're looking at here, this idea. And if, if it is for her to say, I am ready to find myself, it is then for you to say, I'm ready to find myself. Because when she says it, you simultaneously say it as, as her as you. I mean, there is a really interesting parallel duplicate going on here. You're almost through. So two is now turning into one, okay? You are choosing to trust your guide and you are choosing to turn your attention to your guide and turn your back now on the dream. And when you do that, the final yellow thread, it just disappears. And actually she finds new light. She finds healing from this disconnection. She actually starts to find herself now. And you now can find yourself. This is really powerful. And so you are facing your guide and you are saying, okay, I am the student, you are my teacher, I am ready to learn now. Guide me. <laughs> you are full-fledged, opened up, saying this to your guide. <sighs> Very directly. And now it is time for you to know who you are. I mean, it, it begins like that. That is, it doesn't get more loud and clear than, than it begins <laughs> is this, is the statement. Then it begins is the statement. <sighs> and you face him and he faces you. And I feel that energy starting to develop here. And it grows around you and becomes a new development, new experience. It feels like yourself isn't fully here. Again, you're having to learn how to be entirely just yourself. And it feels like um, you're lopsided. And your guide says, if you need to balance your sides, masculine and feminine sides, however you want to look at it, if you want to balance your sides, and then allow me to be the other part of your balance. Allow the spirit to be that for you. And I see him sharing very beautiful energy with you to help you come into balance so you don't feel lopsided. feels strange though and I see the structure that builds around you is an actual bird's nest and it's the type of bird's nest where there's like a little hole that you can go into and it's like it has a roof and walls and the bottom is sort of like an egg shape um, and it's made out of twigs and you are inside and it's grown around you this nest has and I feel that you are waiting but while you wait within this nest, there are echoes of, um, of your, your soul in here. I hear drums, like I hear drums and I hear feet drumming on the ground too. And I hear just what is like uh, light language sounds like uh, Native American calls, um, sounds like this. And a very intense dancing upon the earth, like drumming the feet into the ground. And a calling for spirit. And there's a fire and the spirit enters into the fire. And all of this scene here is taking place while simultaneously you are in a meditative state inside of this bird's nest. And you are receiving the spirit from the fire. You are receiving the energy of the feet on the, the earth. You are receiving the calls 
um, of their own spirits as they call out to spirit to join in their dance and join in the fire. And all of this becomes you. All of this becomes you. Your heart, your mind, your spirit, every, all of this scene and energy of the scene and meaning of the scene, I see it become the breath that is within you, within your being. And there is a time that passes and you are absorbing extraordinary um, informations um, like this from your guide. I mean, they really are focusing on this guide. I don't know who your other guides are, but he's pretty close to you. Um, and very, I mean, they're wanting me to show you this guide. And this guide is wanting you to show, to show you himself. <laughs> so... But I see him sharing more waves, like ocean waves, of these types of uh, memories with your being. And it opens you up. It opens you up like a flower to the sun. And it's new. It's, an, it's, it's always been this way. You're just reconnecting with it. It's rekindling what was always there. You still, you're, the bird's nest now is becoming kind of a shield instead of like a space for you to meditate and for you to receive. It is now becoming a shield for you to not actually participate in the world out there. And so you're shielding yourself from the world out there. And that is not your calling. Your calling is to be a part of the world out there. And so I, I, basically start to de demolish this bird's nest because you have to be present you have to be seen you have to be a part of the world and it doesn't feel like you it doesn't feel like you it's sort of like um, mingling with strangers um it feels like it's like not everybody is that type like you know, and but it feels like this. It feels like um, meeting people that are so different and um, not like you, but having amazing connections and beautiful conversations. And they show me that you um, you have a very specific bird call, and there's other people with other bird calls, and they look like different kinds of birds. Like there's this bright yellow bird, and there's a red bird, and a blue bird, and um, and they're speaking to you, and they're very unique bird calls. But you're translating and processing it, and it feels foreign to you, um, foreign to your bird call. But yet it is uh, an energy download happening in this communication, and you're receiving new energies and informations and perspectives and this is good this is healthy I just don't I don't necessarily see you in um I see you kind of as a uh, your own man like you're kind of uh you're not I don't see you intermingling with like big groups or even um I just see you as a lone ranger. I see you as a lone ranger and you're kind of uh, what could be like traveling um, to different countries and just connecting with earth in different countries and uh, the people that randomly um, happen to cross paths with you. Um, and that was as guided by mother earth energies, the crystal energies as they are moving and connecting. And these are energy downloads. Your guide is also guiding you, of course. I don't see your mind clearing fully of thoughts about the dream, but you are actually engaged in this discovery of self. And it's also healing for her energy that you, that you find yourself. I mean, it literally is sort of like you go backpack across Europe kind of thing. Like you just, you just decide to get away and you do it in a, a really um, extraordinary way that teaches you a lot about yourself and about people and um, about earth energy. Like I, I, they show me um, a scene like this. That doesn't mean you're actually going to do that. Um, but that is what it 
what they're showing me when you let down let the dream set aside the dream aside and you let those connections um, go and you choose to f find yourself on your own pathway it, it looks they show me a scene like this which is reflective of the energy of what you're going to experience during that time You know, in this whole journey, I feel like we are on getting to know you and getting to know this connection, getting to know, um, seeing some things, but I kind of want to get to know you more, like actually get to know you more without this and this dream thing. Like, um, I want to just know who you are without anything in the way of knowing who you are. I do. I, Abby, do. And I think there's uh, a lot of souls out there there's a lot of um i think there's a lot of people i think this is a message saying that there's people all over the world that want to actually know who you are and you you're not making yourself available or present to those souls so they'll never know who you are <laughs> kind of thing but there's value to being open to meeting new people So in saying this, I tell your guides, um, what if I just, this, this journey is no longer about that dream anymore. It's just completely about you. Um, what can we see differently? He says, uh, okay, when we, when we just, for instance, pretend or um, that you never knew this this amazing friend you never gazed into the eyes of this amazing friend you never had that we're just completely removing that from your um life experience so just to see who you are just who you are just who you are and i see you sort of sitting in the universe and you feel lost and I see a tunnel of um, what is like uh, squares and it goes on. It's like a wormhole, but it's made out of squares. Um, and it is before you and it's sort of coming through you, but it's also at a distance from you. And you are just sitting there. You're not moving through the wormhole. You're not allowing the wormhole to move through you. You're not allowing the wormhole to take you anywhere. You just sit in the stars and you feel lost. And I say, I say, this is one idea, but I'm not convinced that is entirely who you are. And I don't feel that you are lost. I feel like you, you know more about your purpose than you're giving yourself credit for. And I feel that I want to see you follow your heart. And so this option of the the square wormhole you sort of uh, change direction and you choose to come to earth <laughs> and i see you with bird wings and you fly down to the planet earth and you're quite a giant right now and you're literally walking across the planet and you're like you could walk across like around the planet in like six large steps you know like you're huge and you're looking at the planet and deciding where you will um, start your experiences here and I say, well, this, this tells me that you're not lost because when you choose to follow your heart, you know exactly where you want to go. So what is, what is uh, getting in the way of you knowing uh, where you want to go and following your own heart? What is getting in the way of that? This is another scene here. It's confusing. It's like a rubber band and half of the rubber band is blue electrical energy and the other half is red electrical energy. And it meets in the middle. And you say this is balance.
And I say, whether it is all red or whether it is all blue or whether it is both, it is always balance. It doesn't have to just be one way for it to be balance. You say, no, this is balance. This is balance. And I snip it in half and I let red go and I just have you hold on to blue and I say, this is balance. And you get frustrated and you snap your fingers and this becomes red and then the other half becomes blue and you say, this is balance. And then I snap my fingers and I transform it all to black and I say, this is balance. You say, I know what to do now. And you say, I will find myself on this earth. And I say, I know you will. And you already have found yourself on this earth. That's why you're on this earth. <laughs> That's kind of funny. You, you change in a really bright, beautiful way. So this scene um, now is showing me just you as you are today. And I see you as you are today exploring what is the meaning of balance and it, who am I, but not who am I, but actually following your heart and knowing who you are. Um, acknowledging more that you know more. I can't, I don't know how to explain this in a way, but um, it's all about you. And it's good. And you're suddenly okay with balance being anything. And you're really bright and happy and at peace. And you don't ask anything of life or expect anything of life. Um, you don't need it to be anything more than it just simply is right now. And I see that you're totally um, at peace. And there's literally no, I see nothing of um, holding on to a dream or the reflection of this friend. I just see you, just you, just you. And you're absolutely vibrant. And is this then the journey of just you? Feeling cut off out in the universe, having the option to go in this direction or allow the direction to take you but choosing not to be taken by it, but going now in your own directive, in your own direction, by your own choice, and choosing to find yourself on planet Earth, which again shows me the backpack, um, the backpacker traveling across Europe kind of thing, traveling into different countries and experiencing other cultures and other people, and finding your reflection in all these people are also your twin flames. <laughs> In a way, they're all reflections of you. And you become so bright and abundant in love and peace and acceptance and wisdom and spirit that there's nothing else to say. That is what there is to say. Just this and see. And it comes to this beautiful expression <laughs> and I say okay so let's bring this back now to where we started you see how your journey has a weird relationship with time as it has happened time as it has not happened time as it is presenting itself um you within different variations of time it's all doing this. So now I'm taking what is the version of you that has never met this other half. Um, and now I'm placing you back into the beginning of this session, which is another version of time and relationship with yourself. And let's see how this version of you that has only known yourself. Now, what does it see in this slice of wood? And he says, I'm no longer needing to look through it because I see it as a mirror for who I am. So the relationship is helping you to access who you are, but you don't need this relationship to access who you are. 
You just need to discover it is who you are right now. And that's part of the journey. And you say you're okay no matter what happens. But, but now that you see this, um, you're just going to let Mother Earth and you, your guides just guide you. You're so happy and content. I see this. All right, I'm just going to... I'm just going to say, okay, well, what else we got? I can't imagine you. I mean, this is, journey is giving you so many different angles, different sides to, to think about and explore. Um, but now that we've seen all these sides, I want to just let it be open to whatever. Okay, I'm actually going to just go into this, what is a pinpoint, and I'm just, it's like I'm going to go in the spirit um, of your friend. And I see a scene where there's a farm and there's a hay, like um, stacks of um, hay that is in rectangular um, shapes. But there's also piles of hay. And I feel like laying down on the hay and looking up at the, the you know, I'm inside of a barn and I'm looking up at the top of the barn from the inside of it. And I'm patient and I'm waiting for a long time and I see a horse come to visit me and it's a painted horse. It has a white face but it has brown on it too. And it's light brown. And it has white white hair. And the horse slowly uh, pokes its head in and looks at her. And um, I expected it to come in all the way, but it doesn't. It just stays at the door. And she never calls for it to come in all the way either. She wants time to just be in this peaceful way and kind of like a dreamer of her own kind. And this horse is also like a spirit guide too, but is also kind of like you in a way. And you'll know if you are, I mean, she will call you when she needs you kind of thing. And she's not calling for you in this way. So the horse now may, must find his own path. And it's almost like the horse could either A, stay on the farm with everything he's familiar with, or the horse could say it is time for me to roam free and to travel the earth to um, be a wild, um, wild horse. And that's a very rare thing to find these days. I don't even know if there are any wild horses left anymore. I'm sure there are in some places, but it's not like it used to be. And I see you choosing to become a wild horse, which is a rare thing. To find your own place, your own heart, and your own meaning beyond the farm. <laughs> and the horse's name is Spirit. <laughs> and you have, uh, I see on your white face, um, a diamond shape image on like the nose between the eyes. It's got four points. And it's like a compass that is a direction of north, east, south, or west. But you are the compass, you are the spirit, and it's like you are going to let the wind or the earth, the stars, guide you. This message again is presenting itself. Hmm. Okay. That's all I can share. <laughs> wow, neat.
going to learn a lot. I mean, you're going to discover a lot. I can't imagine who who you will become in a co- even a couple years time looking back and seeing all of your choices in your life in, in in a new way because as we get older we become more we raise our ability to see so when we're younger we can only see so much but as we age we see more and more and more and more and more to the point where we're kind of on the top of the mountain and we understand many things as we get older and we can see with wiser eyes. And I see you as you get older looking back on your life and seeing with new eyes from a higher vantage point and understanding yourself even more. I just don't, I never see this horse really meeting up with like a bunch of horses, like 20 horses, and you all roam free and wild. But I see you doing that. I see you discovering who you are in on your own is what I see. Hmm. Okay. Thank you so much for exploring the session with me. And it's a privilege to connect with you and your goals and to share this message. And um, super beautiful request. You're a super beautiful person. So... <laughs> definitely you know feel that in your heart and be proud of who you are (laughs) all right and for those watching if any of you are interested in connecting with me one-on-one for a psychic session please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com thank you all for watching i wish you all a wonderful day